Okay, so this is a, a video about my um, focal hand dystonia. It's not about what it is, an explanation of what it is. You'll find this on YouTube or on the internet if you just type in focal hand dystonia. Uh, I'm just going to show you um, my personal symptoms, um, what the issue is. I'm going to kind of try and keep this as a diary uh, to see if I start to show any improvement. Now, I've got to, it's got to be said that this is this first video is after having had um, three courses of Botox treatment. So actually the hand is a lot better now than um, prior to treatment. So the first thing I would say is that if you are struggling and you're contemplating having Botox treatment uh, but are worried about it, uh, I would advise you uh, to go for it. It's, it's obviously a sticking plaster. It's not a cure. Um, I will have to start going again or I will have to go regularly I believe it only lasts each treatment three to four months um, but it has improved uh, the symptoms considerably uh, and it has allowed me to start gigging again as a live musician um, primarily playing chords and things like that because the, the dystonia was so bad that I couldn't even um, shift chords I couldn't hold down a bar chord thus As before, I just couldn't. Uh, this is, by the way, the um, the dystonic finger. It's the middle finger. And what tends to happen is that uh, it uh, every impulse in my hand, in my body, in my mind, whatever it is, um, just wants this finger to curl uh, the whole time under the fretboard. So what what I started to do um, is, you know, do this. because using this finger exerted so much pressure basically felt still does to an extent of course felt like it was pressing through the fretboard you know wanting to to press into my inner body um, so it's kind of sticking as I say this is much better than it was but even now this finger is, is pressing um, too hard into the fretboard which is obviously slows down the motion considerably and it was the, the the riffs that I used to be able to play the fastest something like this for example you know a typical pull off you see you'll see that the finger just wants to stick there Which is not what I want it. I want it to do. I want it to, to do the you know, Michael Schenker style rolling motion. And you can see that when I go to place the finger there, this this finger wants to basically come under the fretboard. So what it actually does is it gets in the way. It seems to want to stick to this finger here, and it gets in the way, and therefore you know you end up by not hitting clean notes because this is it in the fretboard and all sorts and as I say what, what, what I was doing is compensating by getting rid of that finger completely and of course what I've then done is train the brain to uh, to accept that as the normal way of playing which is not what you want to do now if I um, use this finger on its own I, I, you know, Django Reinhardt. There's no, um, there's no issue there. It's when I need to use the three in combination. The other thing is that this, when this finger goes down, this third finger, the ring finger, it seems to impulse this finger to come off the fretboard and again this finger sticks down so although I can perform that now I couldn't perform that when the dystonia was at its worst um, 
you know, a simple hammer horn. You know, this is something that I could have done, uh, you know, at 240 beats per minute at one point. Funnily, if it's only, of course, when the, when the fingertip is actually touching because it's task specific, when the fingertip has, you know, a proper fretting technique, when the issue arises, if I played like this, which is dreadful, of course, but um, the movement doesn't seem to be so limited, although it is limited to an extent. I'll just demonstrate quickly on the desk here um, that although it's task specific and it only affects me when I'm playing the guitar, um, if I do a tapping exercise on the desk here, you can see how, how basically this middle finger, so I'll just adjust the camera here, is a, is, a, is a dead weight. If I compare that with a normal hand, or the right hand I should say, that's what it should be like, this is what it's like. Now the basic physio has, has got me to try and very slowly Rehabilitate it like this, but um, it's just not a natural movement. It has got better. But if I wanted to play it, sorry, I've got the pick of my mouth at the moment. If I wanted to play it, you know, naturally, this is what happens. Okay. So, uh, this being the first video, what I would say is, you know, that first and foremost, Go and get it checked out. Okay, your GP probably will have never heard of it, so you may well uh, want to go armed with some literature. If you've started to experience similar sorts of symptoms where a finger seems to be sticking or pressing into the fretboard um, too hard, and you're not beginning to lose the, your normal dexterity, then it could well be focal hand dystonia. And uh, if you go to the GP armed with that that information, uh, they may well then, as they did with me. Uh, refer you to a neurologist and just read up on all the literature obviously that there is on the internet uh, although there is no no cure at the moment um, there are various people out there who've got uh, all kinds of uh, therapies uh, aimed at helping or alleviating the symptoms and there are guys who, who have recovered from it, fully recovered from it, albeit it's taken years rather than uh, what we'd all like, which is ours, of course. Um, so I'm going in there. This is a, a good day. As I say, normally I wouldn't be able to even do a movement like this. You can still see the dystonic middle finger here just not doing what it should be doing basically and there you go I didn't uh, but I've promised the team I wouldn't do that wanting to hide power It seems to be ascending or descending where it really gets sticky. Ooh, a bit of sweep in there. 
if only. The bad old days. Okay. That'll do for now. Thanks very much.